My first guest uh, tonight uh, is considered to be one of the most trusted uh, people in American broadcasting. Uh, he is heard on over 120 radio stations. Uh, he helps callers solve problems that they cannot cope with, everything from squirrels in the attic to dishonest landlords in the attic. Um, welcome, please, ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Bernard Meltzer. Have a seat, if you will, Doctor. Uh, I, must ah. I must tell you that I've been uh, enjoying, enjoying your radio show, and I have a question. In honor of this occasion, I put on my bow tie. It looks, it looks very nice. It isn't every day that I have the honor of appearing on a David Letterman show. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me ask you what kind of a doctor you are. Oh, in the field of economics. Uh -huh. So this is a, a Ph.D. degree. Yeah. Yeah. And how did a gentleman who uh, is an expert in economics become a radio talk show host? Well, actually, of course, I started out way back a long time ago when I was a lot younger and a lot more handsome as a civil engineer. And then I went through a number of professions as a city planner, as a banker, as an economist, as a financial expert, as a professor, and a couple of other things. Yeah. Now, how did you get from that to being on uh, radio? Well, the way I got to be on in radio is one of the stories of, uh, let's say, Hollywood usually tell stories like this. In Philadelphia is WCAU, yeah. CBS, it's a talk station. Powerful, 50,000 watt, clear, clear channel. channel. What happened is, one Friday night, a chap who has a program every Saturday morning comes to them and says, I have news for you. I just got a phone call. I have a new job. Goodbye. I'm leaving. Mm -hmm. So they got very panicky. After all, Saturday morning. So they thought of Bernard Meltzer, because I had been a guest on there a number of times. And they said, would you please take it? And not only that, but they gave me $50. That made wow. me a professional. Yeah. You understand that? And you get paid. Anyway, <laughs> I took the program. I got through. I started at 10, got through at 12. I walked out. And I said to the station manager, how did I do? And he said, Meltzer, he says, I don't know how to tell you this. I said, I've been in radio for a long time. Your program that you've just done by far is the worst program I've ever heard in my life. That's how I got started. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but if a guy tells you that it's the worst program, how do you get to, to come back the next night? Well, what happened was I walked out very, very depressed. Depressed, more yeah. than that. I was supposed to come back the next Saturday. And I said, goodbye, I'm not coming back. Friday morning, the phone rang. He said, are you coming in tomorrow? And I said, stop making fun. And I hung up. Uh -huh. <laughs> he called again. He says, uh, are you coming in tomorrow? And I said, my ego trip is over. Mm -hmm. He said, I'm coming down and talk to you. And he walked in. And he said, unless you come back tomorrow, you threaten my job. Now you listen when somebody says that. I said, tell me what happened. He said, first of all, he says, you remember I told you, you stammered and stuttered and ruined every commercial? He says, I expected to have make goods for everyone. Make He's, goods meaning people wanting their money back yeah, or right. make good on the spot. You or do up. it over again. Yeah. And uh, he said, the surprising thing is nobody wants to make good. In fact, to get rid of them, he said, I quoted a rate double and triple what we're charging. Mm. He says they're willing to pay it. Yeah. Well, that's money. By so the way. a radio legend was born right then and there. And uh, not only that, but the thing that also happened, CBS had a secret team in town to survey the station. He didn't know it. Mm -hmm. And uh, they sent a report up to New York saying, uh, this man is a good communicator. Don't lose him. Mm. Yeah. So just chance. And, and now you're, you're not only in New York, but you're all over the country, right? People yes, can listen to you. on NBC TalkNet. Yeah. We're now, uh, coast to coast. And you answer questions about anything, right? Well, almost anything, not quite everything. Have you ever had uh, this advice that you dispensed backfire on you? Have somebody later come back to you and said, you know something, uh, I should not have listened to you and had my elbow removed or whatever. <laughs> not that I know. Yeah. And uh, people I've had come close calls, but, not, uh, but nothing, nothing like that ever happened. People actually come to the lobby of the radio station and ask you to take care of things, don't they? Well, yes. See, what we do on a show, uh, we extend what I call a helping hand to those who need help. When you have a powerful 50,000-watt microphone in front of you, mm. you can do things for people that they can't do themselves. Big things, little things. For example, let's some, somebody's fighting with a 
Department. Let me interrupt you here, sure. uh, Doctor, because we're uh, having some time trouble. Maybe you can help us with that, by the way. Uh, uh, we're going to do a commercial, and we'll be back, and uh, Dr. Bernard Meltzer will finish this story. And then we have questions from the audience. <laughs> to the program. This is uh, Dr. Bernard Meltzer, and uh, tell us what you were uh, beginning to tell us there, and I interrupted you. <laughs> My mind has gone blank. Yeah, mine too, come to think of it. What was, <laughs> anybody remember what we were talking about? It was the, uh, oh, uh, people come down and, uh, into the lobby and ask you to help them out down there. Oh, I, I started. Thank you, Steve. Will, okay. thank you. I started to say we use the power of the microphone to help people of all segments, big and little, and very often we have very, let's say, tragic cases where people will wait in the lobby for me because they need immediate help. I do whatever I can. I glad, I'm glad to do it. So you actually, you don't try and duck out the back like uh, Joe Namath did. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> My problem is getting out of the studio. Yeah. See, very often it takes two, three hours to get out of the studio. Oh, yeah, I can imagine that. Well, that, yeah. uh, that must be a nerve frazzling. No, you, you know, remember old Harry Truman said, if you can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen. Right. This is the price you pay. Yeah. And you pay that price. All right. Do you, want, do you want to tell us what happened or do you want to take uh, questions? I'll do anything you say. You're the boss. Okay. Uh, there's apparently some conjecture on that point, too. But <laughs> let's, uh, uh, let's just go right. We have uh, studio audience uh, members fill out these questionnaires, and this okay. is similar to what you do on your radio program. Uh, this um, uh, question number one We have squirrels out on our terrace. And uh, obviously uh, we brought just one heard with the them tonight. Yeah, uh, we just heard it. Um, nothing uh, we've done uh, to get rid of them has worked. We're going nuts. Ah, oh, that's cute. Uh, <laughs> help. Now, what was, what's the solution to get rid of the squirrels on the terrace? Well, of course, the squirrels are getting into the house somehow or other. They're, they're actually in the house. Well, in the terrace. They're, in, they're where? Where are they? Well, no. They're outside. Well, what's they can, you can leave them outside, can't you? Well, if they're outside, you have no problem. That's right. Don't feed them. Don't feed them and they won't come back? That's right. Now, if they get inside, how does she get rid of them? Well, if they get inside... They're eating pardon? your porch. Well, well ma'am, don't you think that'll kill them? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you get enough cement and those squirrels and they'll be, they'll be gone. What if they get inside the house? Well, if they get inside the house, you have to find out how they get in. Yeah. And uh, you... No, this is important. It's very hard. It's very hard because squirrels have a way of getting in which you can't find. You've got to find how they get in. You have to drive them out and close it up, and then they won't come back. Yeah. That's all. Okay. It sounds silly, but it's true. But now what they're eating her terrace. Now what can they do to get them to stop eating the terrace? Well, stop feeding them. <laughs> no, they're not. Fe you're not feeding these squirrels. Oh, well, by the way, is your terrace consists of what? What kind of terrace? Radishes. The wood floor. The wood floor. They're eating the wood. <laughs> <laughs> Squirrels are eating you sure you're not confusing termites with... The <laughs> are, they, are they wearing gang jackets? These are... <laughs> Wait a minute. Even... <laughs> Tough neighborhood. But getting, I know getting rid of squirrels can be a difficult problem. I'm sorry to make, make light of this. Uh, uh, I have a 50-year-old supervisor who continually makes sexual passes at me. If I meet with her in her office, she is very seductive. What should I do? If I want a promotion, should I comply? I don't want to break her heart, <laughs> oh, but I do want to move up the uh, uh, corporate ladder. ladder, the corporate oh, yeah. ladder. This is from a young man, a 25-year-old male. Well, he has a very tough decision to make. One will affect his life, you see. Yeah. And uh, that's a personal decision. We don't ever give that kind of advice. You know why? You never give this kind of advice. No, you don't give that kind of advice. You, you back off it because you are in a personal situation. Different people react differently. Hmm. to a situation like that. I don't know. We don't usually run across problems like that. Oh, really? You don't handle I thought you handled everything. You don't handle everything. No, not quite everything. Okay. Uh, let's move on. I, I hope that clears it up for you, sir. Uh, do we have time for one more here? All right. Um, have a loose... Oh, my goodness. Oh, I'm sorry. You have can't a, ever read that, no, can well, you? No, it's difficult to read there. Yeah. Have a loose rear axle bearing uh, in housing can't be fixed with an oversized... Can it be fixed with an oversized bearing? <laughs> Let's pass that off. <laughs> you do this. <laughs> no, I don't want to. I don't want to make you nervous, doctor. But you're 0 for three. Uh, 
I'm not anything here. I'm not an expert on automobile mechanics. Okay, so you, so squirrels, automobile, and personal lives. And termites. All right. Well, I am an expert on termites. An expert on termites. All right, we're going to go away for station identification. We'll yeah. be back with Dr. Bernard Meltzer. <laughs> Coming up in this next half hour, Melvin Dumar will be here, also George Miller. What, what advice would you have given Melvin Dumar? <laughs> You're talking to me, aren't you? Yes, sir. <laughs> you know, I'm embarrassed. I would ask you, who's Melvin Dumar? Melvin Dumar is the guy who <laughs> claims that he uh, picked up Howard Hughes in 1967, and then several years later, somebody dropped off a will of Howard Hughes, uh, in which uh, a substantial sum of the f uh, part of the fortune was left to Melvin. And he then... Uh, dropped it off at the Mormon church, and then, oh, uh, anyway, the, the will was tossed out, and he didn't get a nickel. Well, I would say rethink your fantasy. Yeah. <laughs> but he doesn't have squirrels. That's the important no, thing. He doesn't yes. have squirrels. Man has no squirrels. Um, uh, tomorrow, Richard Price will be here, uh, Broadway usher Thelma Moore, and comedian, actor, producer Don Novello uh, will be here. Uh, this, of course, is Dr. Bernard Meltzer, and we're taking questions from the studio audience. Uh, let's just keep on going. You said that you're more in the area of finance and business and so forth, right? And city planning, city planning. And construction, and right, engineering, well, let's, let's see. Now, and banking, and banking, money, now, and a lot of other things. Let me just try this one on you, because... And education. We have a, a co-worker who smells bad. He smells bad. Who smells bad. Is this an area you want to get into? No, I, I don't okay. get into bad smells. Uh, okay, my wife and I just gotten married and have been having problems with furniture deliveries. All right. That's a consumer problem. That's good. That's right. Every time a guy delivers the furniture, he smells bad. No, no. no. <laughs> um, every time we have, every item we have had delivered has been broken or damaged, and the store refuses to take them back, uh, but wants to repair them instead. That's a, this is a real problem you could handle. What do you do? Well, the, the, see, the brat part here, well, you del uh, furniture is a very crazy way. They get the money before they drop off the furniture. Yeah. And this is the customary uh, way of operating in the trade. As a result, the consumer is in bad shape. They have the money, and there's no way of getting it back unless you take them to small claims court. If you take them to small claims court, you have to bring along experts to show that the furniture could not be repaired in a reasonable way to bring it, make it equivalent to new. So in a way, you're at the mercy of the store when it comes to the furniture problem. Because the remedy is more expensive and more time-consuming than it's worth, so, usually. So how do you guard against this ahead of time? How do you guard against it? Say I buy a table, I want it delivered, they've got my money, they've got my table, All right. what do I do? You guard against it, they deliver it, unpack it, take a look at it before you hand the money over. Because usually they deliver it, they get the check or the, the certified check. They won't take a check mm -hmm. because they're afraid you'll stop payment on a check. They get a certified check of cash and disappear. Then you're in trouble. So what you do is you have them unpack it, examine it. If it isn't right, don't give them the money. Yeah. That's, that's your protection. So you, you should just think a little ahead of time before you shell out all the dough. A little bit, yeah. Uh, sure. Listen, doctor, it was a pleasure meeting Thank you. you. Thank you very much for being here. Thank Dr. You. Bernard Meltzer, ladies and gentlemen. I've long believed that television can provide a lot more than just entertainment. It can be a tremendously effective tool for the dissemination of information. Well, tonight, as a public service, we're introducing a segment designed to tap the worldly wisdom and technical expertise of a man who is both a businessman and a broadcast personality in his own right. Welcome, please, Mr. Larry Melman. Larry! It's time now for Ask Mr. Melman. Here are the rules. The questions may be on any subject, though, for reasons of time. Math problems should not go beyond trigonometry. 
Uh, all questions must be posed in English, and Mr. Melman may refuse to answer any question that might jeopardize our national security or the security of our nation's allies. And finally, please remember, <laughs> Mr. Melman is not a lawyer. All right. Who, uh, who has a question? How do you do it, sir? Oh, ma'am, you have a question? Stand up, please. What is your name? Sheila Gobey. Sheila, and what is your question for Mr. Melman? My question is, I was wondering what color or colors you feel personally make a woman look sexiest? Uh, red. Do you have any particular reason for that color? No, I just think it's a warm color. <laughs> Thank you very Thank much. You. You have a, you're going Thank you so much for your wonderful question. <laughs> Bob Rooney, please give this nice person two T-shirts. There you are. You have two T-shirts for asking your question. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, my. Who else has it? Yes, ma'am. What is your name? Diana Delaney. Diana, and you have a question for Mr. Yes. Melman. Can a landlord put such... Um, <laughs> this is long. Can a landlord tell you... <laughs> oh, I think he's got enough Wait to work with. <laughs> A landlord puts such conditions in your lease that you have to um, redo the floors and paint all the walls within 10 days after you sign the lease? <laughs> Gee, I don't know. I don't have any reference books on that. I'd have to look it up. Have to Sorry. look that one up. Will huh? you look it up? He'll be happy to what? look it up. I'll be happy to look it up. <laughs> Thank you so much for your wonderful question. <laughs> Bob Rooney, please give this nice person to you. Thank you very much. Uh, this is going even better than I had hoped. Uh, how, do we have time for some more questions for Mr. Melman? Yes, sir. What is your name? All uh, right, Tom Dunyu. Tom, what is your question? Well, I'm a really shy guy, and uh, every time I go out, I see this girl that I like, and I want to find a way how I can date her. A good question. <laughs> well, just go into your song and dance, that's all. All right, thank you. Thank you. I'll do that. That's what I would do. Is that what you would do? Oh, okay. Soft shoe. <laughs> Thank you so much for your wonderful question. <laughs> Bob Rudy, please give Thanks, this Bob. nice person two t shirts. Thank you. Is that it? Well, that's it. Thank you very much, folks, for participating. And uh, gosh, what a for blockbuster me? way to get this segment off the ground. Uh, we'll be right back. Gee, Larry, nice job. Thank you. Uh, we have to thank everybody who was here tonight. We want to thank everybody, Mr. B.H. Berry and also Jan Wallachus. Jan, thanks for your help. Uh, Renee Taylor and Tammy Stafford. Uh, Bill Wendell, Paul Schaefer and the band. We'll see you Monday, folks. Have a good weekend. Good night. <laughs>
Thank you very much. And you go on being the best Jew you possibly can. Uh, who has question number two? Yes, sir. What is your name? Bob. Love. Bob, stand up, if you will, sir. Where are you from? New York. New York, and what do you do for a living? I'm a freelance writer. Freelance writer. All right. What kinds of things do you write? I've written eight books. Eight books? <laughs> you want to name a title? You can buy Dream Jobs, A Guide to Tomorrow's Top Careers at your bookstores today. Oh, all right. Uh, now, uh, do you have a question for Mr. Melman? Yes, this is a baseball question. What is the term for a pop fly that is hit between the infield and the outfield? A, tes a Texas league. Hey, how about that, Daryl Strawberry? 26 home runs. <laughs> Thank you for your question. Bob Rooney, please give that nice person two T-shirts. Yeah, two T-shirts. <laughs> the most pointless bit of television I have ever been a part of. Uh, thank you very much for your question. Good luck with your book. So where is uh, the person with question number three? What is your name, sir? Uh, Tad O'Karma. Uh, stand up, if you will, sir. Where are you from? Uh, Wilkesboro, Pennsylvania. And, and what do you do for a living in Pennsylvania? Go to Villanova University. I see. And what are you studying there? Uh, Pre-law. All right. You have a question for Mr. Melman. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Melman, two years ago, I was in a car accident. And since then, my premiums for insurance have gone through the roof. Is there any way to get them down? Well, only in a great country like this one is it possible to change your identity through a series of easy-to-get false documents and papers. <laughs> I find the best deals and IDs in the back pages of Soldier of Fortune magazine. <laughs> or go to Reno and ask for Kyle. Tell him Larry sent you. That's all I can say right now. Don't worry, you'll find him. What a wonderful question. <laughs> Bob Rooney, give this nice boy two T-shirts. <laughs> There are your two t-shirts. Well, uh, question number four. Who has question number four? How do you do, sir? What is your name? Stand Tom. up, please, Tom. Where are you from? Uh, Glenish, Connecticut. Uh-huh. And uh, what do you do for a living, sir? I'm a student. Yes, sir. I saw you the other day, didn't I? No. I didn't see you. All right. Uh, and uh, you have a question for Mr. Melman. Yes, I do. All right. What happens when an immovable object is met with an irresistible force? You can bet, just as sure as you live, something's got to give, something's got to give, something's got to give. Thank you for your question. Bob Rooney, please give that nice person two T-shirts. All right. There you are, Tom. Thank you very much for your question. Uh, you folks are in a little broadcasting history. This is the last episode of Ask Mr. Melman. No. Uh, but... Uh, <laughs> but, of course, I was only kidding. Uh, number five, who has question? Yes, sir, what is your name? John Hyano. John, stand up, please. Where are you from, sir? Uh, I'm from New York. And what do you do for a living? I'm an advertising photographer. All right, sir, and you have a question for Mr. Melvin. Yes, what is the world's largest insect, and what is it? Well, it's difficult to name any one insect as the largest due to mutations within a given order. But I would say that the largest insect on average is the Goliath beetle, which reaches an average length of four inches, 10 centimeters. To those of you who bothered to learn metric. <laughs> no, it's hard to say. My aunt once said she saw a cockroach as big as a house. So it's all really subjective, I guess. Thank you for your question. Bob Rooney, please give that nice person two T-shirts. Here we are, John. Do these uh, T-shirts say anything? No, that's the, that's the beauty of them. You can put your own little saying on there. Thank you very much. Good luck to you, John. Who has question number six? How do you do, sir? Stand up, if you will. What is your name? Kevin Kaler. Kevin, uh, what do you do for a living? I go to school. Uh-huh. Uh, very few people here actually hold jobs. <laughs> and, Kevin, where do you attend school? Uh, University of Richmond. All right, sir. And what is your question for Mr. Melman? I want to know how I tell the most beautiful girl on campus that I want her without making an idiot of myself. Well, the first thing you want to do is make her notice you. I suggest you gain a lot of weight. <laughs> the bigger you are, the better your chances of being noticed. <laughs> Wear brightly colored clothing and funny caps with eye-catching attachments. <laughs> and most importantly, shout her name loudly whenever you see her. <laughs> and laugh a lot like this. Hey, Tammy! Ah! <laughs> Please yeah. give that nice person two T-shirts. I have two T-shirts. 
Yes, Jiminy. Oh. Okay, well, thank you, sir. Uh, Larry, thank you. Believe me, a terrific thank job. You. Thanks to everybody who participated here tonight and asked Mr. Melman. Uh, we got to go away. Marv Albert is here tonight. Thanks again, folks. <laughs>
I'm sorry, Garland? Garland. When, what part of the state is that in? Uh, southeast. Uh -huh. And do you, do you have a job there? You go to school? or? Yeah. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Where is it? It's in Southeast. Da da by Dallas. It's a suburb of Dallas. Yeah. So is that in the Southeast or not? North. North. Yeah, North. Well, kind of a scathing indictment on the school system there, isn't it? All right, John, just let's put all this geography nonsense out of our heads. Do you have a question for Mr. Melman? Yeah, we're on spring break from school, and a bunch of school kids came up here, and we were wondering what we should see in New York and what we shouldn't. Well, you should see the World Trade Center and the Wall Street area. They're pretty big and right in Manhattan. Also, the Statue of Liberty, that's pretty obvious. Central Park is pretty big. I don't see how you could miss that one. If I'm guessing right, you shouldn't see the Aleutian Islands, that's in Alaska. And although they're big too, it's just too damn far away. I also have my doubts about you seeing any of South Dakota. Can you believe it's still snowing up there? <laughs> Bob Bruni, please give this nice young man two t-shirts. That Thank you very was much. a Here's fine from, question. From Bob Rooney. Thank you, Larry. Let's see. We're going to... <laughs> Hi, how are you? Hi. What is your name? Claudia Lewis. Claudia, are you also from New Albany, Indiana? No, I'm from Red Bank, New Jersey. Thank heaven. <laughs> and uh, these are great shoes, by the way. Terrific. Oh, thank you. What do you do for a living, Claudia? I'm a student at Wesleyan University. And what are you going to do when you get out? Um, hopefully do something in publishing. Uh-huh. doing an internship now. Well, good luck to you. Now, what thank is your you. question for Mr. Millman? My question is, if you had a dinner party and could invite any ten people, living or dead, who would you invite? Any ten? Well, I would say Cleopatra, Napoleon, and Karl Marx. That would be about it. I only have four dining room chairs. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your question, Bob Rooney. Please give Thanks, that nice Claudia. person a t-shirt. There you are. Hang on to this. Uh, you'll be uh, happy you came one night. Thank you. Uh, one more here? All right. Yes, sir. What is your name? Bill Copperwatch. Bill, nice to see you. Where are you from? I'm from Edison, New Jersey. Edison? And what do you do over there? I don't... I actually don't live there right now. I'm uh, going to school down in University of Tennessee. Uh-huh. And uh, what, are you, what are you studying at the University of Tennessee? Physics. Physics. And what do, what do you want to do when you get out? There is nothing to do if you're a physicist. <laughs> Well, uh, for your folks, this has been money well spent. Huh? That's right. Go sure ahead. Uh, okay, you have, uh, do you have a question for Mr. Melman? Yes, I do. Uh, I'm up here on spring break, and driving up, I noticed that why is it you always seem to get better gas mileage on the first half of a tank of gas? I'm glad you asked that question, Bill. <laughs> the reason is because any dirt or sludge in your gasoline tends to settle in the lower part of your gas tank. When this dirty gas is drawn into the engine, it burns less efficiently and lowers your mileage. Do what I do. Never let your tank get below three quarters full. <laughs> Just pull into every gas station you see and top her off. <laughs> sure, it takes a lot of time, but I have nothing better to do. Do you? Thank you for your interesting question. Oh, it was an interesting question. We have a t-shirt coming Bob out Rooney, of here. Bob Rooney, please nice man. Thank you, Bob. There you are, sir. Have a nice vacation. Thank you, folks. We, we ran out of time. I'm awfully sorry. What, what is your name? Susan Spillane. Susan, we don't have time for your question, and I feel that you perhaps are the luckiest of the bunch. <laughs> uh, we have to pause. We'll be right back, folks. So return, won't you? Thank you, Larry. <laughs> Well, uh, tomorrow on this program, Franken and Davis will be air, actress Erin Gray, and oh, this is exciting. We, we're going we're gonna to fill the uh, studio with ducks, and then we have some uh, border collies who are, who are going to herd them. That'll be exciting. That will be, uh, <laughs> uh, what's her name? I'm sorry, Kevin. Uh, Ethel Conrad and her uh, border collie demonstration tomorrow night. Now, it's time for Ask Mr. Melman. Let me give you the ground rules first. All questions must be posed in English. Mr. Melman may refuse to answer any question that might jeopardize our national security or the security of our nation's allies. And finally, please remember, Mr. Melman is not a lawyer. Ladies and gentlemen, Larry Bud Melman.
Good evening, I'm Larry Bud Melman. Tonight I'll answer questions on any subject. I handle personal problems, money problems, and affairs of the heart. I'll respond to questions on science, math, sports, and the world of entertainment. So go ahead, ask Mr. Melman. But remember, I am not a lawyer. All right. <laughs> Mr. Melman is not a lawyer. Who has, uh... Who has the first question for Mr. Melman tonight? Yes, sir. What is your name? Uh, Scott Spencer. Scott, where are you from? Uh, East Haven, Connecticut. What do you do for a living? Um, I'm an injection machine operator. All right. Good for you, sir. Go ahead and, and ask your question of Mr. Melman, if you will. Um, I would like to know what is the best way to invest a large amount of money? Well, Scott, doing the right thing with a large amount of money is quite a responsibility. You could put it in a bank and watch it slowly increase in interest. But I think you'll do better putting your money to work. Enter a lot of lotteries and sweepstakes. <laughs> Bet on a lot of horses and get your cash into as many chain letters and pyramid schemes as you can. You're bound to see a good return on some of them. Bob Rooney, please give this nice man two T-shirts. All right, Scott, there you go. Thank you, Scott. Who, uh, who has uh, question number two for Mr. Melman? Where was question number two? Hi, what's your name? Janine Albino. Janine, nice to see you. Where are you from? Brooklyn. And what do you do for a living? I'm a dental assistant. All right, and uh, your question is what tonight? I'm getting married soon, and I would like to know how much money my husband has to make to support my, myself and a child. The rule of thumb is that the head of a household <laughs> should earn his or her weight in thousands of dollars. <laughs> so if your fiancé weighs 200 pounds, he should be making $200,000 a year. If your fiancé doesn't earn the spare minimum, do yourself a favor and call off the wedding. <laughs> Rooney, please give this nice lady a t-shirt. There you are, Janine. Good luck to you. Two t-shirts. Have a nice wedding. One more? All right. Who, uh, who has question number three tonight for Mr. Melman? I'm sorry. Yes, sir. What is your name? Jim McDonald. Where are you from, Jim? Ramsey, New Jersey. And uh, what do you do for a living? <laughs> I'm unemployed, Dave. All right, sir. And what is your question for Mr. Uh, Melman tonight? Mr. Melman, I'm dating a beautiful woman right now who's employed. And I'm not, she's supporting me. What should I do about this? Well, let me see if I have this straight. <laughs> she's beautiful, she makes good money, and she doesn't know you're unemployed. <laughs> That's Frankly, correct. I don't see what your problem is. <laughs> <laughs> don't, say, don't say a word to your girlfriend. I mean, you've gotten away with it so far, haven't you? <laughs> now, please sit down so I can talk to some people with real problems. <laughs> Who is uh, number four? Who is... All right, sir, what is your name? Steve Howlett. Steve, where are you from? Chico, California. Oh, Chico, California. Yeah. I'll be darned. Nice yeah. to have you here. Thank uh, you. you go to school in Chico? I do, yeah. It, would it be Chico State? Chico State. I'll be darned. Uh, from the dance of the same name, isn't it? Yes. Uh, and then what? Um, just have some uh, other random Chico yes. State jokes. All right. Uh, what is your question, sir? Um, we came out here in a Ford station wagon and drove about 3,000 miles to see a show, and we spent a lot of money, and we'd like to know the uh, safest and cheapest way to get back to California. All right. <laughs> cheapest? Safest? I wonder if the early pioneers would ever have discovered the Golden State if they were concerned about the cheapest, easiest route. Be an American for once in your life and play with it. Just get a sturdy front bumper and aim west. Sure, you'll rip up a few lawns. There may even be a garage or two in your way. In fact, you'll probably cause quite a bit of damage. But real Americans will respect you just the same. Okay. Bob Rooney, please two give that nice Let's get on with it. Sure. Nice meeting you. Thank you very much. Have a good trip back. Okay. Larry, thanks. Uh, terrific answers tonight. I think you've changed some people's lives. Uh, we have to go away for a commercial. We'll be right back with Renee Taylor. Now, 
Uh, we got a uh, we got a letter from a famous New York City radio personality last week, threatening not threatening implying legal action if we didn't stop doing something on this show. Really? Yeah. Can you speak about it legally? Well, I just did. I just but I can't tell you any more than that. But we're going to sue him too. We're going <laughs> to just you got to beat him to the punch. I'm t I'm just tired of being a pushed around. And by the way, if you're thinking of suing us, we'll we'll sue you first. And and <laughs> and these lawsuits we start. You know where we start, don't you, Paul? What is the basic We start at 1.7 million. Start there. That's where we start. So if you're if you have any idea, if you're, if you're licking a stamp, going to send us a suit, forget it. You're going to get a 1.7 million suit right back. So we'll get Joan. We're going to sue her. And we're going to, this guy operates on a 50,000 watt clear channel radio station here in New York, and he's bullying us a little bit. No, no, that don't go anymore. 1.7. Okay. Um... Thank you very much. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, folks. Thank you very much. Okay, it's time now, once again, for a segment we like to call Ask Mr. Melman, So We Do. Let me read you the rules. First of all, Mr. Melman may refuse to disclose information concerning American troop movements or the positions of our ships at sea. <laughs> Number two, due to the unfortunate incident last month, no more questions regarding swimming pool chemicals. And finally, please remember, Mr. Melman is not an attorney. Ladies and gentlemen, Larry Bud Melman. Good evening, I'm Larry Bud Melman, and tonight I'll answer questions from you, the public. They can be questions on any subject. I handle personal problems, money problems, and affairs of the heart. I'll respond to questions on science, math, sports, and the world of entertainment. So go ahead, ask Mr. Melman, but remember, I am not a lawyer. Okay. <laughs> And we may have to run down there and take his pulse periodically. Who has the first question for Mr. Millman? What's your name, sir? Uh, Pat Carlin. Pat, where are you from? Yes. Manhattan. What do you do for a living, Pat? Uh, right now, I'm looking for a job. What kind of job would you be hunting for? Uh, public relations, advertising, mm -hmm. something like that. Have you had any experience in that field? Um, no, just Well, I don't think it's important. <laughs> <laughs> no, entry okay. level. All right, Pat, what's the uh, question you have here for uh, Mr. Millman? Okay, what is the best method of job hunting? Oh, good question. Larry? Job hunting, why bother? You didn't ask to be born. I would say that the society owes you a living. <laughs> New York has many generous assistant programs with minimal residency requirements. So why waste time looking for work? Hop on the government gravy train. It's the only way to travel. <laughs> Okay, here's a couple of t-shirts. There you are, Pat. Good luck to you. I hope Thank you can you. Uh, prosper by that word of advice. Uh, number two, who is next? Yes, sir, what is your... Oh, it's Don. Stand up, Don. You are Don, aren't you? I'm Don again. And uh, what's your full name? Don Policasco. And you're from Clearwater, Florida. That's right. And you're a social worker. Right. We didn't arrange this before the show, did no, we? No, no, no. no. Uh, you're, here on your... you're not here on your honeymoon, are you? No. Okay. Just to visit some friends. Okay, and uh, how family. long have you been in town? Two days. All right, and what is your question, Don? <laughs> I have a problem with mold and mildew. I don't know what to do. It's just relentless. Can you help me? Well, you're living in the wrong state. <laughs> if you want to avoid mildew and mold, I suggest you move up above the Arctic Circle, <laughs> where the temperatures are generally in the sub-zero range. <laughs> Few organisms can survive in such a hostile environment. In fact, your chances of survival are also quite slim. <laughs> Either way, your life will be a living hell. Frankly, I pity you. <laughs> Bob Rooney, would you please give this nice person two T-shirts? Two T-shirts. Great. Here you are. Thanks, Don. Nice seeing you again. Sound advice. Hi, what's your name, sir? Tim O'Malley. Tim, where are you from, from sir? Chicago, Illinois. Oh, what do you do for a living there? I'm a runner at the Chicago Board of Options Exchange. Oh, that's uh, an exciting, interesting way to make a living, isn't yeah, it? it? What is. are you doing in New York? Uh, visiting, check out uh, some shows, and just vacation. Having a good time? Yeah, it's great. Okay, and uh, <clears throat> well, have a seat then. No, no, no. <laughs> uh, what is your question for Mr. Melman? Well, I'm dating a 19-year-old girl, 
and uh, I've met uh, someone that's closer to my age. And how, how old are you? I'm 26. 26, all right. And I've met someone closer to my age, and I, and I want to date this one girl that's closer to my age, but I don't want to break up with the 19-year-old without ruining her life, but only Larry can help me. All right, Larry. <laughs> oh, now, come on. Why would you have to break up with one to go out with the other? Why not string them both along? Get with them. It's the 80s. <laughs> Would you please give this nice person two t-shirts? Thanks, Bob. There you go, sir. Thanks, David. Nice Good luck to you. Nice to you, too. Who's that? Who has our, uh, someone here have the fifth, are you number five, ma'am? Where's number five? Oh, okay, I'd stand up. You're five? Yes. Is this woman number five or some sort of heinous imposter? <laughs> what is your name? Sheila. Sheila, nice to see you. Where are you from? Hoboken, New Jersey. And what do you do for a living? I'm in insurance. That's all you want to tell us? Yeah, well, yeah, right now. All right. <laughs> we'll play along with that. What is your question, Sheila? Okay, what is the best thing to do on a hot summer Sunday afternoon in New York City? Good question. Well, why not do what I do? <laughs> I grab a six-pack of Frosty Tall Boys, <laughs> sit out on the stoop, checking out the girls. <laughs> Especially the ones in those short shorts. Ucha <laughs> magucha. <laughs> Rooney, please give this nice person two t-shirts. Oh, yeah. Thank you very much, Bob. Sheila, nice meeting you. Thank you very much. Is that it? Okay. Uh, thanks, folks. We have to uh, go away. Margaret Smith is here. We'll be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, tomorrow on this very program, we have another fine show for you tomorrow. Stupid Petrix, viewer mail, and we have a man here who will wrap anything in shrink wrap. Do you know what shrink wrap is? No. Uh, I'm not sure either, but it, uh, you, you seal it all in. You do what? Oh, it's the stuff, yeah. Oh, you buy a record album, it's been shrunk wrapped. Is that right? It'll be great. It'll be much more exciting than this explanation. Um, that'll be tomorrow night. Okay, oh, later in the show, Cheryl Teagues is here, also uh, Emo Phillips. Ladies and gentlemen, right now it's time for Ask Mr. Melman first. The ground rules of tonight's discussion, please. Number one, do not shout your questions. Mr. Melman's hearing is fine. <laughs> Number two, also Mr. Melman asks that no flash cameras be used and that no one make any sudden moves. <laughs> and finally, please remember, most importantly, Mr. Melman is not an attorney. Ladies and gentlemen, Larry Bud Melman. Good evening, I'm Larry Bud Melman. Tonight I'll answer questions from you, the public. They can be questions on any subject. I handle personal problems, money problems, affairs of the heart. I'll respond to questions on science, math, sports, and the world of entertainment. So go ahead, ask Mr. Melman, but remember, I am not a lawyer. Not a lawyer, okay. He's doing something to his hair, I think. Uh... Who has the uh, first question for Mr. Melman this evening? Oh, how do you do? Nice to see you. What is your name? My name's Jacqueline Landry. Jacqueline, nice to see you again. That's, a, a, that's an especially nice outfit you have there. Thank you. That's a, Thank a baseball you. uniform, sort of, isn't mm -hmm. it? Yeah, and, and what does this mean across the front there? I really don't know. Yeah, well, it I looks have very no idea. nice. It's comfortable, like isn't it? Exactly. Yeah. Cool. Well, well, thank you for being here. Thanks. Oh. Uh, first, I'd like to say I really like Mr. Melman. I think that he's just terrific. Well, thank you. You're how may I help you? <laughs> A few weeks ago, somebody um, backed into my car, and he did about $600 worth of damage. And he won't pay for it, and I can't afford to pay for it. And it's got to be fixed before it has to be inspected, and it has to be inspected by the end of the month. So how can mm, I get him well, the to, heat's on here. to fix well, it? Well, I'll tell you one thing. Forget going to court. That'll take years. There's a better way to get satisfaction. Give him a taste of his own medicine. <laughs> Play tic-tac-toe on his hood with a nail. Smash his windshield with a brick. Set his upholstery on fire. Sure, it won't fix your car, but I guarantee you'll feel better. Bob Rooney, please give that nice young lady two t-shirts. There you go. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. Thank you. Stop that. Uh, all right, who is our uh, second questioner for uh, Mr. Melman, for Mr. Melman tonight? 
How do you do, sir? Nice to see you. What is your name? Uh, Bill Hanson. Bill, what do you do for a living? Well, I'm in advertising and printing. Here in New York City? Uh, no, in, more, in Oklahoma City. Oh, now you change it there. There's something suspicious well, I, going I, on I, here, I, Bill. I live in Moore, but I work in Oklahoma City. You live City. in Moore, Oklahoma? Right. And mm -hmm. how far is that from Oklahoma uh, City? About 15 miles. Uh -huh. And what are you doing in New York, sir? Uh, visiting and business. Mm -hmm. Having a good time? Uh, you betcha. What else have you done besides come here? I've gone to a lot of nice restaurants, visited a lot of big buildings, things like that. Uh -huh. you know? Okay. <laughs> uh, do, you, do you have a question for uh, Mr. Melman tonight? Well, yes, I do. Uh, Mr. Melman, I'm, I'm really glad he's here to help me out, you know, and answer mm -hmm. these questions for me. Well, thank you, Mr. Thank Melman. You. How may I help you? <laughs> well, sir, I'll just, you know, I'll just, uh, just curious as to whether a man who is uh, financially secure and uh, has four kids and a lovely wife and, you know, you know, just happy with everything in life and everything. Can, can you really love another woman? Well, sir, I'm going to give you a little advice. <laughs> and I hope you listen carefully. There are things in life that are very important, even sacred. One of those things is your right to have a good time. <laughs> if you think you found a fun gal, I say go for it. Your wife and kids might not understand, but right now I'd say they're just raining on your parade. <laughs> Remember, life is a cabaret. Bob Rooney, please give this nice man two t-shirts. All right, here are your t-shirts. Thank you, Jeff. Have a nice time in New York. Number, number, number three? Who, who is uh, number three? How do you do? What is your name? Margo. Margo, where are you from? Tucson. Tucson? And uh, what are you doing in New York? I'm on vacation. I, I know you, don't I? Yeah. <laughs> I thought I did. But it's, uh, you're a relative of somebody I know, aren't you? Mm -hmm. George well, Meyer? Yeah. Does, can we disqualify this woman for this? <laughs> nice to see you, Margo. What nice is your question? You. Um, this is something that's been bothering me, and I just want to take the chance to say I think you're a saint. You've done so much for so many people. Larry Budd, oh, God bless you. Thank um, you. How may I help you? <laughs> um, well, this is something that's been bothering me for so, quite some time. It's... Um, why are women's haircuts so much more expensive than men's? Well, women pay more for haircuts than men for a very simple reason. Women are different from men. They're more gullible. They'll believe almost anything they're told. And that's why they keep getting hoodwinked, cheated and overcharged. I think it's something in their chromosomes. Bob Rooney, please give this nice young lady two teeth. Nice to see you. One more. You're gonna get beat up, Larry. Um, who, number four. Who, how do you do, sir? What is your name? My name is Brian Hart. Brian, nice to see you. Where nice are you from? Nice to see you. I'm from Connecticut. Connecticut, sir. Yes. And uh, what is your question for Mr. Melman? Well, um, Mr. Melman, again, I'd like to say that uh, since I've discovered you on the late night show, I've learned to set my standards very high. And my wife and children have noticed a great difference in, in me since I've well, started watching you. you. How may I help you? My question is, is what... He's got to be stopped. That's all there is to it. <laughs> what is the largest island in the Mediterranean Sea? Good question. Oh, my. Oh, oh my. We've got a real smart aleck here. <laughs> you already know the answer to that question. You're wasting your time and you're wasting my time. Why don't you just sit down and shut up? <laughs> Bob Rooney, give him a t-shirt that doesn't fit. Awfully sorry about that. Here are your t-shirts. Okay, there you go. Uh, we'll be right back with Cheryl Tiggs. Thank you, Larry. Okay, uh, coming up in the uh, second half of the show, Carla DeVito will be here, also George Wallace tomorrow on our program. George Carlin will be here, wrestling personality Lou Albano will join us. Yeah. And, and I think the emphasis here ought to be on the word personality. Uh, also actress Judith Ivey, uh, viewer mail, and we're going to drop some more stuff off a five-story tower. But right now, <laughs> it's time for another uh, uh, very popular segment of this uh, uh, television program is called Ask Mr. Melman. Now, before we bring Mr. Melman up, let me read you the ground rules for tonight's uh, discussion. Please, number one, remove jewelry and other shiny objects as the glare may disorient and alarm Mr. Melman. <laughs> for personal reason, Mr. Melman insists positively no questions about voting safety. 
And finally, please remember, Mr. Melman is not an attorney. Ladies and gentlemen, Larry Bud Melman. Good evening to my wonderful, wonderful friends. I'm Larry Bud Melman. Please think of me as family. Maybe you want to think of me as your Uncle Larry, or perhaps as your grandfather, or even as your mate, or maybe just as an old boyfriend who shows up after years and years and makes your life a living hell with a lot of phone calls in the dead of night. But whatever you do, please think of me as family. So ask Mr. Melman, but remember, I am not an attorney. Okay, we're ready to begin. Who has the first question this evening for Mr. Melman? How do you do? What is your name? Lorraine Rossi. Lorraine, nice to meet you. Where are you from? I'm from Hawthorne, New and, Jersey. And what do you do for a living? Nothing. I see. <laughs> uh, any plans for a job ever? Uh, I'd like to be a princess, yeah. <laughs> well, all right. We'll notify you if an opening happens here in the office. <laughs> Uh, you have a question for Mr. Melman. Yes, I do. All right, go right ahead, Lorraine. Well, first I'd like to say that I really appreciate your sincerity and your warmth. Oh, and, thank uh, you. Oh, you're welcome. Hiya. How may I help you this evening? <laughs> <laughs> well, the question is, I'd like to know how, how long a girl has to wait for a guy to pop the question before she gets too tired. Well, thank you, my wonderful friend, for your wonderful, wonderful question. You know, sweetheart, you have to give a man time. I'd say 15 to 20 years is about average. And during that time, he may want to try out other women. This is what I like to call nature's plan. As my grandmother used to say, a man moved by the cow unless he's drunk the milk for years. And had a chance to drink plenty of milk from other cows too and decided he liked the first milk better thank you for your question bob rooney please give this woman two t-shirts i'm sorry about that good luck to you Yes, who has our uh, second uh, question? How do you do, sir? What is your name? Richard Butchka. Richard, where are you from? Several, New Jersey. And you, sir, do what for a living? I'm a student. Mm -hmm. do you, have you ever had a job? No. <laughs> you ought to be over here with Lorraine. <laughs> Uh, what is your question, sir? Well, Mr. Melman, first I'd like to say we all consider you to be a national treasure. <laughs> Thank you. Hiya. How may I help you this evening? The hell has gone wrong. I'm going to have to be traveling out to California for college, and that'll entail traveling back and forth by plane. And I was wondering what you could do to help me relieve the anxiety I feel while traveling by plane. Well, young man, there's plenty you can do to reduce your anxiety while flying. Go into the cockpit every few minutes and ask a lot of questions. The more you know, the calmer you'll feel. Other tension relievers that work for me are sprinting up and down the aisle as fast as I can. And every now and then, letting out a scream of terror. Bob Rooney, please give this nice young fellow two t-shirts. You want to hear a Good luck to you. Thank you very much. Nice meeting you. All right, who has uh, the third question? How do you do, sir? What is your name? Uh, Jim Davis. Jim, you look like you're on vacation. Uh, just for the day, unfortunately. Right. <laughs> and where are you from, sir? I'm um, from New York. Uh -huh. And what do you do for a living? I'm a banker. All right, and uh, you have a question for Mr. Melman. Yes, well, first of all, I'd like to say, Mr. Melman, that you've been the uh, guiding light of my life since the late 50s. Oh, thank you. Hiya, how may I help you? <laughs> my question is a simple one, but it's important to me, since I am a banker. I'd like to know, what would you do to solve the third world debt problem oh that's what i like to call a good question i just tell those countries to do what i do when i'm short of cash pawn something <laughs> there must be plenty of old saxophones kicking around the third world all those lesser developed countries could invite some richer countries to a bear sale or car wash if that doesn't work they should play the ponies <laughs> 
<laughs> if you hate the trifecta, you're set up for a week at least. <laughs> Bob Rooney, please give that nice man a chance. Jim, nice meeting you. Thank you very much. Good luck to you. We have time for one more? One more? Who has the uh, fourth question? How do you do? Larry, are you getting enough air down there? <laughs> okay. What is your name, ma'am? Linda Brown. Linda, where are you from? Long Island. And you do anything for a living? I'm a nurse. You are a nurse. Oh, good. Someone finally is employed. Oh, I guess Jim. <laughs> Jim had a job as well. Uh, and what kind of nurse are you? I'm a registered nurse. All right. And you have a question for this man? Yes, I do. Okay. My landlord, um, our rent is included, our utilities are included in our rent. And I was wondering, he goes around and shuts all the lights off periodically every day. And I was wondering if there's anything we could do to prevent this. Oh, that's easy. It's a simple, wing, it's a simple wiring job. <laughs> Behind every switch is a red and black lead. From the red lead, fray the red lead. Sorry about that. And solder it to the cover plate. Then be sure the carpet below each switch is kept good and damp. <laughs> Next time he drops by, have your Polaroid ready. Cause with all that raw voltage coursing through his body, he's gonna pump, plump, like a full park Frank before your very eyes. Certainly worth capturing on film. Bob Rooney, please give this nice couple two teachers. Thank you, Thank you so much. What the hell, three teachers. Okay. Oh, my. Is it any wonder this segment is so darn popular? Uh, thanks, Larry. Nice job. But we'll have to uh, pause here for a minute. Carla DeVito will join us when we return, folks. Thank you very much. <laughs> A man in our studio audience just handed this to me, and he said, this is for you. And I gestured with it, and it looked like I was emptying the spit valve on a trumpet. You, you've been using this yourself, haven't you? Practicing a little bit. Yes. Bill, here you go. Boil that. Thank you very much. And, and if you want to come and be part of our studio audience, uh, just to hear Paul Schaefer play piano, you ought to do that, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Doing a little of the winking. It's uh, uh, Monday on this television program. Loretta Lynn will be here, and comedian Margaret Smith will also be joining us. That's Monday. Uh, plan your day around it. Jot it down on your shoe. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time once again for our uh, Ask Mr. Melman. Here are the rules. Uh, number one, Mr. Melman refuses to answer questions about his Mayan heritage or any so-called lost gold. <laughs> Number two, Mr. Melman is not liable for your personal belongings. Number three, Mr. Melman does not give flu shots. Number four, Mr. Melman is not an attorney. Ladies and gentlemen, please say hello to Larry Bud Melman. to my wonderful television family. I'm Larry Bud Melman, and I answer questions of both head and heart. I'll respond to questions on science, math, sports, and the world of entertainment. So go ahead, my wonderful friends. Ask Mr. Melman, but please remember, I am not an attorney. Okay. Who has the first question tonight for our uh, friend, Mr. Melman? How do you do, sir? What is your name? Jeff McDermott. Jeff, where are you from? Middletown, New Jersey. What do you do for a living? I'm a professional photographer. And you have a question for Mr. Melman? Yes, I do. All right. Uh, I'd first like to say it's a great honor for me to be able to ask Mr. Melman this question. And I'm glad he's not an attorney because that's what it has to deal with. Um, I owe my attorney $1,000. And I really don't feel that I should pay it. And I was wondering what you think of that. Well, in your situation, the American legal system is clearly on your side. Just hire a more expensive lawyer and sue the first lawyer for whatever you can get. If you win, you can pay your new lawyer. If you lose and can't pay your new lawyer, just hire a third lawyer and sue him. With any luck, you'll never have to pay anybody. You'll be dead and buried before the whole mess works itself through the courts. <laughs> Bill Wendell, please give this nice person two teachers. Very 
Tamara shirt. There's your T-shirt. Thank you very much. Nice meeting you. All right. Oh, so I'm sorry. Did I? Uh, I didn't mean to turn my back on you. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming in, sir. All right. Uh, number two. Yes. Hi. What is your name? Suzanne Blair. Suzanne, nice to see you. Where are you from? Kansas City. What do you do for a living in Kansas City? Um, I'm an artist and also I go to school. Uh huh. And uh, are you studying art in school or studying something else? Art. Yeah. Uh, Kansas City is a nice town, isn't it? Yeah, I like it a lot. Yeah, it's very pleasant. What are you doing in New York? Uh, visiting some friends and looking into the art field out you here. You touched me on the knee. <laughs> <laughs> to hell with Mr. Melman. <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry, did you have a question uh, for Larry? Yes. Um, first of all, I think you're just great. Um, and I'd like to know um, what you'd offer, <laughs> what you'd offer um, advice you'd give to an art student who is maybe thinking about coming out here to New York. Hmm. <laughs> well, I'm not going to kid you. If you are sure about being an artist, you better be ready for a lot of suffering. I mean a lot of suffering. How much suffering? Like dank, miserable living conditions, where the air reeks of broken hopes, <laughs> defilement of the human spirit. You will be poor, you'll go without food, but that only lasts about a week. <laughs> Once people know you're serious, it's easy in this city. They practically pay your way. Bill Wendell, please give this nice person two T-shirts. Okay, two T-shirts. <laughs> there you are. Are you... Are you really thinking about coming out here to be an artist? Possibly. Well, good luck to you. I hope it works out nicely Thank for you. you. Thank you. Nice meeting you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Sure. You. Okay. Remember, a man never stands so tall as when he crouches by a basement window to check for seepage. Some words to grow by. Thank you very much. Uh, who has the uh, third question? On it? Hi, what is your name? Carolyn Head. Carolyn, where are you from? Cranford, New and Jersey. Cranford, New Jersey, and you do for what? A living? I'm an administrative. <laughs> Something like Excuse that. Me. I'm sorry, my fault. You do what? I'm an administrative assistant in a real estate company. Do you like that job? It'll do for now. Okay. Well, what would you rather be doing if you had to change? Not that. I'd rather not have to work at all. Yeah, there you go. All right, you have a question now. Yes, I think you look marvelous tonight. <laughs> oh, thank you. Uh, Hiya, how may I help you this evening? <laughs> My question is, what little signs do you give a girl to let her know that you're interested in her? Well, when a man fancies a particular lady, the first thing he does is to find out where she lives. He lurks in the shadows and follows her everywhere. She goes, keeping about 20 to 30 feet behind her. If she looks at him, he runs away. In many budding relationships, he gets a job in her apartment building, takes photos of her to cover his walls. He tells everyone he meets they are engaged. So if you're being followed by a dangerous, Looking stranger, it just could be love. <laughs> it just, what was Bill that? Wendell, please get this. Wait a minute, nice wait a minute. What was, <laughs> wait a minute, what was the last line? It just might be what? Followed by a dangerous looking stranger. It just could be love. Oh, okay, fine. Thank you. <laughs> there you are, Tim. Nice meeting you. Thank you very much. Is that it? Oh, we're done. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Larry. A fine job tonight. Let me get this straight. You're not an attorney? Okay. Uh, we'll be right back with Gilda Radner, folks. This is complicated. Get ready to circle your TV guides. You know, television is more complicated these days. Monday night will be on 
Is this right? Is this possible? Monday night will be on at 1130. Yes. Our guests at that time will be Steve Martin and Brooke Shields, plus stupid Petrix. Now, a lot of people have written NBC and said, gee, we wish that show were two hours a night. Well, Monday will also be on at 12.30. Uh, our, guests, our guests on that particular show will be Liberace and Bob Dylan. That's Monday. And, and, and on Tuesday, we'll also be replacing the Today Show. So... Uh, okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is it. This is the surprise I promised you all. It's time once again for a segment we like to call, so we do, Ask Mr. Melman. Now, before we introduce Mr. Melman, let me read you the rules for this uh, experiment here. Uh, one, Mr. Melman asks that women refrain from using heavy perfumes or lip lacquers as they disorient and confuse him. <laughs> two, Mr. Melman may ask questions to be repeated when posed in colloquial slang. <laughs> Three, Mr. Melman will not be giving flu shots. And finally, remember, Mr. Melman is not an attorney. Ladies and gentlemen, here he is, Larry Bud Melman. Good evening, I'm Larry Bud Melman. And tonight I'll be answering your questions on any subject. Financial problems, romantic entanglements, foreign policy. In answering these questions, I will be drawing upon the rich reservoir of experience I have accumulated as both spectator and player in the games of life and of love. Experience that has thrilled me, hurt me, made me wiser. So please go ahead and ask Mr. Melman, but remember, I am not an attorney. Okay. <laughs> you're, you're doing something to your hair, aren't you? Yes, it's, yeah, you it's so. different. I All know. right, who, uh, who has the first question for Mr. Melman this evening, ladies and gentlemen? Hi, what is your name? Michael McConnell. Michael, nice to see you. Gosh. Where are you from? I'm from Oaks Valley. Oh, I'm sorry? Locust Valley. Locust Valley. What do you do for a living, sir? I uh, go to school and mm -hmm. work in the garment district. What are you studying? Uh, fashion buying and merchandising. Oh, I see. Well, that ties in perfectly with your part-time job, but I guess yes. you knew that, didn't you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, all right. Do you have a question for Mr. Melman? Yeah, I have a theory that if uh, you look good, you feel good, and vice versa. If you feel good, you're going to look good. And I'm wondering if that holds true to you. Well, And by frankly, the way, you've been uh, very instrumental in my uh, life. Oh, in your thank you. What answers. can I do for thank you? you. Frankly, I disagree with that theory. <laughs> for example, I feel great. And you look good, too. Well, thank you. So there, Bob, therefore, my theory please works. please give this nice person two T-shirts. All right. There you are. Thank you, Bob. There you are. Thank you. Nice meeting you. Good luck. Before we go to the next question, I'd like to leave you with this thought. You can fool some of the people some of the time, and that's a darn good percentage. <laughs> <laughs> All right, who has the next question for Mr. Uh, Melman here? Hi, what's your name, sir? Hi, my name is John Gillette. John, nice to meet you. Where nice are you from? Nice to meet you. I'm from San Francisco. Yes, California. what do you do for a living there? I edit videotape. Oh, really? You know, I was just in San Francisco not long ago. I didn't know that. No, it's a nice town. Well, yeah, no, of course a, you wouldn't know that. How would you know town. that? Yeah. I don't know. I liked it. You know, they call that the, uh, the city by the bay. Do they really? Yeah. God, that's good. Uh, have you ever been there in the summer? It gets awfully cold in the summer. Have you noticed that? Yeah, I have noticed Ooh. that. Paul, okay. Paul would like it there. Do you have a uh, question for uh, Larry tonight? Well, Larry has been important to all of our lives, and, and we spent a lot of time watching Larry Budd on television. Uh, and we came up with this question the other night. How does television work? Oh, a good question. Larry? Thank you. Thank you. Well, when you ask technical people, they usually say something like, well, rays of reflected light hit a photoconductive material, and transform the light energy, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> but my personal experience has been that each time a TV camera is aimed at me, a little bit of my soul is sucked away. <laughs> each time I feel a little weaker than the time before, my very essence is shrinking and will eventually disappear altogether, at which time I will probably not have an original idea of my own, and have to read pre-prepared responses from cue cards. But for now, gee, I'm sorry. What was the question? 
Bob Rooney, please give two this teachers, nice person yeah. okay. to you. Thanks, Bob. There you go, sir. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. We have time for another question for Mr. Melman. This is going awfully well this yeah. evening, don't you think? Who, who has the other question? How do you do it? Are you the uh, questioner? Yeah. Whatever that word is. What is your name? Kelly Dwyer. Kelly, where are you from? Nebraska. Uh -huh. And what part of Nebraska? Um, North Platte. North Platte? Yeah. Oh, is that a nice area? Mm, it's okay. It's okay? <laughs> what, uh, what don't you like about it? Mm, I don't know. Yeah. Are you just visiting New York? Yeah. First time here? No. You come here a lot? Mm, yeah. Do you like New York? Yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Do you have a question for Larry? Um, first, I'd like to just say that um, your advice has really helped me in the past, yeah. and I, I hope it helps me again. Well, thank you. How may I help you? Um, <laughs> I'd like to know if um, you think that a relationship would last um, with a man being twice the age of a woman. Well, my darling, <laughs> to answer this, let me put on my psychologist's cap. <laughs> oh, well, I am flattered by your bold face, come on. <laughs> I feel that for me to become attached to any one woman at this point in my career would be a grave injustice to my fans. Sorry, but I tell you what, how about two t-shirts? Bob Rooney, please give this up. pathetic opportunity. Two t-shirts. Thank you very much. That's it. Bold face, come on. <laughs> well, we learn a little something every day, don't we? Uh, we're done. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for helping us out tonight. We'll be right back. We're not, we're not on tomorrow. I guess uh, we made that announcement a little earlier. Tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Ruth West... No, not, tom not tomorrow. Wednesday. Thank you very much. Wednesday, Dr. Ruth Westheimer will be here. Also, actress, comedian... <laughs> Whoopi Goldberg will be here. Now, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Kevin, let me see that card again. Let me see the card again. I think we have the names reversed. It should be Whoopi Westheimer. <laughs> And Ruth Goldberg, she'll be here. <laughs> Dr. <laughs> Dr. Whoopi Westheimer will be. But you know, now where were we? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it's time once again for a segment of our program we like to call Ask Mr. Melman. By the way, this particular segment has been nominated for a Peabody Award. Now, <laughs> let me read you the ground rules before we introduce the man himself. One, anyone attempting to pass personal messages or hotel keys to Mr. Melman will be asked to leave the studio. Two, Mr. Melman will answer no questions concerning the German V-2 rocket project and maintains that he was hiking through Utah during the war years. And finally, please remember, Mr. Melman is not an attorney. Ladies and gentlemen, here he is, Larry Bud Melman. Good evening, my fellow Americans. I'm Larry Bud Melman, and at this time of national decision, I'm here to help you with your personal decisions. I will answer questions about the pathetic mess you've made of your personal relationships, or the hopeless tangle you've made of your finances. In fact, I'll answer questions on any topic, but remember, I am not an attorney. All right. Let are you all set, Larry? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How have you been lately? Just fine. You look good. Thank you. Are you working out again? Why, sure. <laughs> all the time. Uh, who, who has the first question for uh, Mr. Melman tonight? Hi, what is your name, ma'am? My name's Diane, nice to meet you. Where nice are you from? You. Uh, Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Oh, that's a nice place to live, isn't it? Yeah, very nice. What, very are, you, nice. what are you doing in New York City? Um, an aspiring actress. Well, good luck to you. Have you Thank had any you. luck so far? No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> My uh, question concerns. You touched that. me right I'm there sorry, on the leg. I'm sorry. I have
have a feeling your luck is about to turn. Wait, <laughs> Wait a minute. Uh, all right, do you have a question for Mr. Yes, Melman? Yes, My question is, is it possible to become wealthy legally and with good morals? Listen, sweetheart. <laughs> the great thing about being wealthy is all the immoral things you can do with money. I have known every woman and tasted every pleasure. <laughs> Including that of hunting man for sport. I have toppled governments with a flick of my wallet. <laughs> Shamelessly manipulated Congress just to make a little girl cry. <laughs> and the outcome of tomorrow's election will come as no surprise to me. <laughs> remember, remember every man has his price and only a fool buys retail. Bob Rooney, why don't you give this nice young person two t-shirts? Thank, Thank you very much. There you are. Thank Good you luck much. to you. Thank you for being here. Larry, tuck your collar in. Tuck, tuck your collar in. It's what? making us all nuts. What's the matter? It looks good. Okay. All okay. Right. All right, stop right there. That's enough. Oh, all right. Uh, who has the, uh, the next question for uh, Mr. Melman? Hi, nice to see you, sir. You what is your name? Will Spencer. Where are you from, Will? Richmond, Virginia. And uh, what do you do for a living? Uh, I'm working in investment bank. Yeah. You like that sort of thing? Uh, yeah. What so brings bad. you to New York City? Um, in, uh, on uh, on vacation right now. Uh huh. What else yeah. have you done besides come here? Uh, been to Baltimore. Uh, been stayed down south for a while. Uh -huh. Yeah. Tra Tra travel agent set travel, up? Uh, uh, <laughs> yes, I did get to a travel agent. Uh -huh. yes. well, good. Good. It's yes. like the trip of a lifetime to me. Um, well, <laughs> Uh, wasn't bad, wasn't no, bad. Uh, <laughs> do you have a question for yes, Mr. Yes, Melman? Yes, I do. Mr. Melman, uh, why is it that truckers and other country music uh, personalities uh, place so much emphasis on a cup of coffee and a slice of hot apple pie? Because they are patriotic Americans. <laughs> Perhaps you prefer some borscht and a, gla a glass of Rutsky vodka. <laughs> This country has had it with your kind. The American rebirth has begun and won't be complete until all you simpering turncoats are stamped out like bugs. Well, I can't stand. Oh my God. I can't stand to look at you. If this weren't a free country, I'd have you dragged out of here and shut. <laughs> Since I can, just sit down. And Bob Rooney, do not give him a T-shirt. Uh, <laughs> why, why don't you and I go down there and turn his lights out? <laughs> well, you got a t if you give him a sponge, if you don't have a T-shirt, we'll get you something. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank I'm you. sorry you had to be subjected to that. <laughs> We have time for who? Uh, do we have uh, who is the uh, third questioner? Number three. Hi. What is your name, sir? Scott Anderson. Scott, nice to see you. Where are you from, sir? Metuchen, New Jersey. Metuchen, New Jersey. Yeah. What do you do there? Yeah. I'm a contractor. Uh -huh. All right. And uh, you have a question for Mr. Melman? Yeah. Um, I wear size 13 shoes, and I have a lot of trouble finding styles that I like. Can you help me out? 13. 13. <laughs> Holy cow. Well, my wonderful friend, first of all, I would abandon all hope of building a decent life among normal people. Perhaps a career in missionary work will take you up to some remote corner of the globe where the cries of freak and mutant will at least be spoken in a tongue you cannot understand. But if you do find some size 13 shoes, give me a call. I could use a new sailboat. <laughs> God, I'm awfully sorry about that. Uh, you know what they say about the uh, shoe size. Oh, my. Bob Rooney, why don't you give this nice young person two T-shirts? Two T-shirts. Thank you very much. There you are. Thank you, sir. Nice And remember, you. my darling, evening. I cried because I had no shoes until I met a man who had size 13 feet. Then I laughed myself sick. Uh, thank you, sir. Larry, Larry, your collar's out again. Um, oh, gee. All right. Got it. Is that it? Yep. Okay. Uh, are we done? <laughs> we are done, and we'll be right back. Thank you, folks.